So if we trace out a single period that looks like from here to there, it's the easiest way to do it. It's the easiest way because if we can figure out what that number is there, then we'll know what period it is. Okay. Um, maybe that's not the easiest. Maybe the easiest would be to use two things that actually have markings on them. So from here to there is also a period. And that's from pi over 8 to pi, pi over 8. Makes it a little easier. So how do we find the distance between pi over 8 and pi, pi over 8? Subtract, just like any, any time you want to find the distance between two things. Five, four, five pi over eight minus pi over eight, that equals four pi over eight, and that can be simplified to pi over two. Oh, okay. Another question? Jessica? Number 49. 49? 29. 29. Oh. I'm having trouble here. Okay, so there's this pendulum, and it starts at, uh, where does it start at? Guess, well, maybe we should comment on that quite yet, but it's a pendulum, it swings back and forth, that's how pendulums work. And the, um, the time it takes to swing over here and back is actually called the period of the pendulum. Um, and an interesting thing about pendulums is uh, if, you, if you make a pendulum, which is just anything that, that hangs down that you can swing back and forth, so like you know, a hypnotist waving a watch in front of your face or uh, anything like that can be a pendulum. Um, whether it's swinging or a child on a swing, you can do this. I, I proved this to my wife one day when we were at the park. We had a, a little baby child, and uh, could, she couldn't swing herself, so you're just pushing her. And I told her this, and, and we confirmed it with my stopwatch. Okay. No matter if it's swinging really big or it's swinging really small, doesn't matter which, it takes the same amount of time to swing from here to there as it does from here to there. Really big or really small. As long as you have the same weight, the same length of a pendulum, it doesn't matter how big the swinging is, it takes the same amount of time. So next time you have a pendulum, Time it from, from here to there, and from here to there, it'll be the same amount. Kind of interesting. Okay. So here, here we go. The pendulum uh, travels, it swings back and forth, and when it swings out to here, it's traveled a horizontal distance, D. And D, you can figure out what D is at any given time with this equation, four cosine pi t. So if I want to know how far away from the, the middle, how far away from the, the resting uh, position it is, I'd say two seconds. Then I plug in two. That says two pi. What's cosine two pi? One. one. Cosine one. This is four times one. So four, so it must be four to the right, horizontally, at two seconds. Okay. And if I want to know at three seconds, I plug it three, and on and on, back and forth. <coughs> but what we want to do is answer a couple questions. First, they want us to graph it. Graph this. All right, you got it. two things. Uh, about this that we need to consider. Only two things that we know about this graph so far, and those two things are what? Mm -hmm. It starts with A and it starts with a B. Amplitude and B. Amplitude and the period. Okay, what's the amplitude of, of this graph? Yeah. Amplitude of this wave is four. Okay, so it goes up to positive four and down to negative four, it's midline, right there on the x-axis. Okay, and its period is always given by 2 pi over b. What's b in this case? It is pi. b equals 2 pi over pi. Pi's cancel, and we 
get two. The period is two. Okay. And it's the cosine wave. A good thing to keep in mind in general is that the cosine wave, it starts from the, the middle, right? It's midpoint, which is kind of a, a misnomer. But if you start right here, it starts at the top, goes to the bottom, it goes to the top again. The sine wave, this is cosine of x. Y equals sine of x looks like this. Starts here and goes up to the maximum, down to the minimum, and back up again in a period. This is a cosine wave, so it's, uh, it's just got an amplitude of 4 and a different period, but other than that, it's exactly the same, which means that it'll start out here at its maximum, cross the x-axis, go down to its minimum, cross the x-axis again, and back up to its maximum. <clears throat> There's one period, we can mark out another period like this. Where would this be? Four. Four, period of two means two more. So four, six, eight, so on. Three, one. Okay, so we graphed it. And the question here, and I think it's kind of a bad question actually. We've got it in the other classes. This is what is the greatest horizontal distance the pendulum will travel from its position at rest? This is its position at rest, right, right in the middle. If we um, say we plug in half a second, d equals four cosine of pi times one half, or one half of one second, d equals 4 times the cosine of pi over 2. What's cosine of pi over 2? Again, zero. 0. 4 times 0, d equals 0. d equals 0, the distance equals 0 means it's 0 inches away from being straight up and down. It's not swung to the right or to the left, it's straight up and down. It's, it's position at rest. Okay, So all I've been talking about here so far is that's its position at rest. And so I want to concentrate on the wording. It says, from its position at rest. Okay. So also right here along the x-axis, that would be where it's at its position at rest, where the distance is 0. This is the d-axis. So there, its distance is 0 when it comes and it's, it's hanging straight down like that. Okay. So if we read that question the way it's worded, it says, what is the greatest horizontal distance the pendulum will travel from its position at rest? So here's its position at rest. So what's the farthest it will travel from there? Four. I agree. Four. What's the greatest distance it could travel like in, in one motion? What's the farthest it could, it could move at one time? Eight. It can move all the way from negative four to positive four, and it can move eight. If you look at the answers on the homework, their answer is eight. But I think it's a, it's, it's a bad answer or it's a bad question. Right? The question says, from its position at rest, if it's from its position at rest, I would think it would be four. It would move four away from its position at rest. If it's talking about the maximum distance it could travel, and then they just stop talking, then that would be eight. So, yeah. But I think they put it in there on purpose so we would discuss it. Questions? Right, any other questions that you have about the homework? Come on, it's not summer yet. We're close. Number six? Okay. really capitalize on the, the advantage we have right now in this. There's only two things to change about these graphs. Okay? It's amplitude and it's period. And that's it. If you figure out those two things and mark them off in the graph, then it becomes pretty simple to graph. Do this. Like we're just going to mark off its amplitude, whatever its amplitude is. I guess we could go negative amplitude here. We're going to have a negative value of that. Mark off the uh, period, one full period, 
whatever we find out that is. Okay. It's a sine wave. What's a sine wave look like? Start at zero. Start at zero, goes up. Okay, so let's put this into four pieces because that makes it really easy to say it starts here, goes there, comes down through here, down to the minimum, and back up to the midline again. <coughs> I'm almost done and I haven't done any math. I've just graphed the sine wave for one period. And all I need to do is erase these labels and replace them with what they should be. So how much is the amplitude? How big is that? It's one. It's one, so let's get rid of these. It's one. One, negative one. Okay, now I just need to figure out what the period is. How do we figure out the period every time? Two pi over b. Two pi over b. What's b? One fifth, the number that you multiply by x. So I put parentheses around it, that guy right there, including any pi that you might see, but there's no pi in this one. That's two pi times five, that's 10 pi. So we get rid of this now. When we know that that full period is 10 pi, half of that is five pi. That would be 2.5 pi. This would be seven and a half. I had already drawn the graph before I even knew what the period was, what the amplitude was. I know all of these waves look exactly the same, okay, with a few alterations. Now, today we're going to change more things. There's more things we can change about these graphs, so we should really you know, take advantage of the fact there's only a couple of things to start with, amplitude and period figure those out, and we can just add a little bit more on, add a little bit more on to that. Now that be good? Um, maybe eventually. Maybe eventually. Just keep in mind that, you know, you can turn your homework in just before grades are due, and, you know, so you have time to go at your own pace if you want to retake quizzes and tests. Just consider that an opportunity to go at your own pace. And always ask questions. Are there any other questions? So we got the amplitude and the period. We can find those two things, or you can at least on, on this, on the subset of graphing. All right, if we're done with that, Not a fresh sheet of paper, maybe you want to continue from last time notes. I'm going to remind us before we get into the new stuff of what we've already done. A reminder of that. It's a handy little online web 2.0 tool. All right, so this is getting into what we're going to do today, but here's what we've done last time. Just a quick reminder of what that looks like. We might have a graph that looks like y equals a times the sine of bx, or y equals a times the cosine of bx. Okay, and a and b are those two things that can change the amplitude and the period. A changes the amplitude, and b, where is my b changes the period. If I change the amplitude a, then I get a taller wave. Eight. The amplitude is eight when a is eight. What about if a is negative eight? Still eight, then does the graph look any different? Mm -hmm. yeah, two, it'll be flipped over though. So I, this guy that's at positive eight, if I if I make this negative eight, it'll be down here at negative eight. And this guy that's negative negative eight, it gets multiplied by negative eight. Or negative one, and so it's gonna be up there at positive eight. So let's see that happen. So negative eight. And you can see those waves change position. That happens every time you multiply a function by a negative flips it over. If it was a line, a parabola, a circle, or anything, cubic, quartic, if you multiply it by a negative, it's going to flip it over. <coughs> so there is the amplitude change. And B 
changes the period. If I change B, I change the period. Bigger value for B means a shorter period. A smaller value for B, that means less than one, but bigger than zero, gives us a longer period. Okay, and if we make B negative, then it flips it over to the Y axis. See how the sine wave starts from zero and goes up? Now if I make a negative, it starts from zero and goes down. B changes the period, A changes the answer. Just a little summary of what we did last time. Now in blue, you see that blue wave that was back there? Um, we'll incorporate the other two things we could change. That would be the vertical and the horizontal. Shifting them that way. Which of these, do you think that if I change H or K, which one of those, when I change it, would make it shift up and down? Okay. Make K. Let's try K. All right. If we make K four, then it's shifted it up four. What? Like the whole graph isn't at four. The whole graph has shifted up an amount of four. Every every point in that graph has shifted up four. But what part of it is actually at four? The middle. We can call it the midline if we like. Okay. We could even throw a. Uh, a line that will follow that around. Uh, y equals k. If I can, uh, there we go. Okay. If k is zero, if it hasn't moved up or down at all, that middle is right on the x-axis. If we move it up, that midline follows it up to wherever it goes. Plus six, it's at six. Plus 5.7, it's at 5.7. So that's a, a helpful thing when we vertically shift something to put that midline down so that we know uh, we can mark off where it goes above that midline, it crosses that midline, it goes below that midline. Vertically shifts. Um, so, what do you think H will do? If we subtract something or add something to x inside the parentheses of sine or cosine, what do you think that will do? Move it left to right. Yeah. That's not familiar. I moved that other four. We put plus or minus inside the parentheses of x and it shifts it left to right. Put in square root of x minus two. Well, this looks like the square root graph except for it moves to the right two. Do the absolute value, it moves to the right or left. Put in a uh, plus or a minus inside here with x inside the function. The function is sine, and if you subtract something from x before you take the sine, then it's going to move it left to right. Now, take note of this: that h is being subtracted. Okay, pretty important. Being subtracted. So when I sub when I make h five, what I'm seeing here is x minus five okay, at x plus five. So when h is a positive number, it's actually something that's being subtracted. Here's why we do that, because now if I make h positive 5, it will shift to the right 5. Okay, so that's why we put that negative in there. But that means that if you see x minus 5, x minus 5 correlates to a shift to the right 5. So you might think it might be to the left 5. It's actually to the right 5. So I move this to 5, then it shifts to the right 5. And as h becomes bigger, positive, and we subtract something that's bigger and bigger, we move it more and more to the right. But notice with a sine wave or a cosine wave, you know, at, at some point you move it to the right enough, it just looks exactly the same as it did before. So I'm going to take a guess this from here. I'm going to put this back down on top of the other one. Okay, you can see I've got plus 0.7, or you've got h is 0.7, so minus 0.7 there is moved to the right 0.7. And as I make h bigger, Right now it's completely flipped upside down. And, okay, so we're getting closer to it just lying right back on top of it. So what do you think H would have to be so that when I make H that value, you know, it starts out here, and if I move it to the right, like how big would H have to be? How far would I have to move it to the right, essentially, 
to get to just lay back on top of yourself and look exactly the same. What do you think? However long the period is. However long the period is. Perfect. I generalize it to everything. However long the period is, if we move everything to the right a certain amount, okay, then this point will move to the right, this section right here will move to the right, and it will need to lay on top of that. Well, that's at 2 pi, so it would have to move to the right 2 pi, wouldn't it? And that's the whole period. And no matter what the period is, that's true. Okay. Well, what's the period of this one right now as it sits? 6 point. Good. It's 2 pi, so it's 6.28. Okay, well, that's kind of hard to do with this thing that takes decimals. But 6.28 is close to 6.3, so we can certainly see what it seems right. That uh, looks like it's lying right at 6.3, right on top of the other one. Pretty cool. Um, what if I change the period? Uh, let's change it to, uh, mm, yeah, to uh, 3. Okay, put it back. Okay, so now the periods are the same. So what would k have to be to move the blue wave to the right until it just lays back on top of the red wave? Mm -hmm. Do I mean h? What do I say? You said k. Oh, I did say k. h is what I meant to say. The letter h. Better not. So what would H have to be worth? What would get it to slide over and lay right back on top of the red wave again? What's that? Three? Uh, Is three the period? Yeah. No. no. Right. How do we find the period? No. Ah, two pi over B. Yeah, two pi over B. So two pi over B is three, so two pi over three. So we write two pi over three, but again, this guy, uh, H is, Decimal number. So what decimal is close to two pi over three? Two point something. Two point something. You got it. Two point one. Two point one. Okay, so we're doing two point one. Here's two point one. But uh, we're going to work on uh, H and K, changing things with H and K. And then we'll put them all together, okay, where we have the ability to change the amplitude, the period, shift it right and left, shift it up and down. We can change all of those things all together. We can shift it up and down, left and right, change the period, change the amplitude. These where they are. You can see the amplitude is 1.2. The period is 2 pi over 1.2. Uh, it's moved to the right. Or let's see. No, it's moved to the left 2.3 because we subtracted negative 2.3. It's moved to the left 2.3. And it's moved down 2.5. Let's do a vertical shift because I think that's pretty uh, obvious to, to, to some, and if it's not, then it's a pretty easy place to start. So let's start with the cosine wave, cosine of x plus three. And make sure to put that plus three way, like put way too much space in between the cosine of x and plus three, so you'll know that plus three is not in the parentheses. If it were, now we'd need to draw a parenthesis. So it's just cosine of x. 
take the cosine of x, you have to read yeah, I have a few if anybody wants them. So plug in x values. Remember when we do the square roots? We did y equals the square root of x, and we picked x's to plug in, and we made sure to pick ones that were easy for us, like 0 and 1 and 4 and 9 and 16 and so on. Quick choice values for x. But we'll do the same thing with the cosine and the sine waves. Pick values that are easy, like ones that give us 0 and 1. And maybe 1 half, but it's why would we want to do that? We got lots of them to give us 0, 1, 0, and then negative 1, and so on. And then we'll see what's the cosine of x look like, and then what does it look like when we add 3. So some easy ones, 0. Pi over 2 is nice. Pi. 3 pi over 2 is a good one. And a 2 pi. We could just keep going around the unit circle in units of pi over 2. These ones are easy because we either get a 0, 1, or a negative 1. All right, so for the first stage, this will be uh, the y value before it gets changed. So the cosine of 0, what is that? Zero. 1. 1. It's 1. Okay. So, uh, 2. So here is, that's not a good color. Okay. Uh, so this is 1. OK, so this part of it is 1. We plug in pot, uh, 0, we get 1. For that part, we add 3. What do we get now? 4. Okay, so it goes up to. Two, three, four. It's right up there. It has moved up three. Three has been added to that value. Okay, what's the cosine of pi over two? Zero. zero. Okay, so this part of it is zero. This is the cosine of x. This is what cosine of x is worth. So we take zero and we add three, and we get three plus three. So Normally we get pi over 2 comma 0, but when we add 3 afterwards we get 3. Like I said, that the midline is a pretty helpful thing to draw out uh, to give you a, a guide. All right. What's the cosine of pi? One. Cosine of 3 pi over 2? Zero. Zero. Cosine of 2 pi? One. 1. And what do we do? We're adding 3 to all of them. Actually, let's, let's graph these real quick. Of course, it looks like a cosine wave. <coughs> Negative 1 plus 3? 2. 0 plus 3? Three, 3. 3 plus 1? 4. Okay. So all of these values have 3 added to them, so they just move up 3. This one moves there, this one moves up to there, this one all the way up there. So it looks the same, it's like a cosine wave, but it's moved up three. It looks a little squished because I didn't give myself enough room.
two, and just to make it a little more interesting, we'll make this two. Be a little boring if I just ask you to shift it down to. So we could set up the table of values, okay, and it would, uh, you know, do the same thing as, as what I'm about to show you. Um, what are the two things that will change about this graph? The amplitude and the path where it starts. Where it starts, okay. Let's start with where it starts. Where will it start? Negative two. Negative two. So we'll go down to negative two. And gives ourselves a midline, like a starting point for these things. So we know it's going to be right along here. This period has not changed, it's not shifted horizontally, but it does have a different amplitude as an amplitude of 2, which means that from its midline up to the very top will be 2. Okay? So that zero. means that where will its maximum be? 0. Up here at 0 somewhere, okay? So we'll mark that off just as a guide. And then its bottom will be where? Minus 4. Minus 4 or negative? Thank you. Because it's where we Sorry. Still has a period of 2 pi, so we can mark off a full period. That'll be 2 pi. Half of that will be pi. This will be pi over 2. And 3 pi over 2. That's not a good one. That's better. 3 pi over 2. <laughs> not the same. Okay, so the sine wave looks like this, right? So it'll look just like that, only down here. It'll go from here up to there. Maximum, midline, minimum, midline again. Shift it down two. It's got an amplitude of two. If there's period changes and the shifts and the horizontal shifts, we can do that as well. But there's those two things. So, in essence, like I think this is like screwing me up yeah. even more, like trying to keep the chart down. Because uh -huh. like, I feel like I have to plot those down. I'm like, also, yeah, like, you know what I guess? So basically, you can just. Yes, I'm going to the right. Certainly will strengthen your math skills in general if you can. If you feel like you cannot, listen, people. If you feel like you cannot construct one of those tables, then maybe challenge yourself to construct one of those tables. Because if you're, if you're not able to, um, then certainly a skill I would assume that uh, you would have. If we're graphing these things, I would assume you could make one of those tables. Let's make one real quick. Not too difficult. You just gotta do things in the right order. And we'll start with two sine. We can start with sine x and then two sine x and then two sine x minus two. We should have like three columns here, but we don't need that. It doesn't seem to be the confusion. The confusion seems to be here. Now look, we're gonna take the sine of x, multiply it by two, okay, get what that is, and then subtract two from that. We're not gonna subtract two from x. Because two is not inside there with x. It's not in the parentheses with x inside the sine function. It's outside. It's after you take the sine. Yeah. So 0, pi over 2, uh, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. All right, so first we put in 0. What's the sine of 0? 0. And when you multiply it by 2? 0. 0. zero. <coughs> pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2? Wait, sine of pi over 2, you got your circle there. One. 1 times 2 is 2. Sine of pi? Sine of pi. 0. 0 times 2. Zero. Sine of 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 right there. Negative, Negative 1. Negative 1 times 2. 2. 2. And 0 again. Sine of 2 pi is 0 times 2. 0. Two. Okay. If we, let's color code those with. No more weird noises ever again. Okay, so it's got this point at zero, 
Uh, then pi over 2 comma 2. This is without subtracting 2. This is just 2 times the sine of x. Uh, then it goes down to 0. Then down to negative 2. And then up to 0 again. It goes like that. If we move this whole thing down to, then we should get this one. Okay. Shift it down to, we get that guy right there. Cool. So that happens when we subtract 2 from each of these. 0 minus 2, 2 minus 2, 0 minus 2, negative 2 minus 2, and 0 minus 2. Zero, then minus four, minus three. You can also use this handy thing. A is two. And oh let's see, let's let's make A one and T one. Or just like make everything its regular thing that it starts out. I'm thinking of what would. No. So well that's point nine. Okay, so k is negative 2, negative 2. Stop it. <laughs> Moves it down 2. And then the amplitude is 2. Multiply this by 2. Looks exactly like the one that we drew. Do a horizontal shift. Shift it. And remember, it shifts the opposite of what you might think, what your brain tells you it would be. When you subtract 2 on the outside, it goes down 2. Down, negative, minus, down. That makes sense. Okay. But when we have something like y equals the cosine of x minus pi over 2, you might think, OK, that's a horizontal shift. Minus, negative, left. That all goes together, but it actually goes right. So real quick, just give you a, well, let me just show you one graph here. So it'll be one, it'll be zero. Okay. So I'll show you minus, right, it's minus. This is one, this is one, this is zero, this is zero so far. So right now it just looks like the sine of x. So if you go minus, pi over 2, I wonder, ouch, uh, yeah. keyboard, okay, and then I'll show you what that looks like compared to y equals the sine of x. So there's y equals the sine of x in uh, purple, looks like a bluish for me, I guess. And then when we make h pi over 2, meaning we have x minus pi over 2, it moves to the right, pi over 2. So you shift everything over, pi over 2. This guy right here, it was at 0, 0, moves over here, pi over 2. Over pi over 2. This one right here shifts to the right pi over 2, now it's at pi. From pi over 2 to pi. Okay. This one that was at pi moves over to 3 pi over 2. This one's down here that was at 3 pi over 2, shifts over, and now this minimum is at 2 pi. That's just a verify that that is what happens, but let's look at more why it does that.
So that thing that's in the parentheses, we can think of it as like that orange blob, that, that thing inside the parentheses, okay? So that thing inside the parentheses, we would like to have that be those values that we that find convenient, like 0, and pi over 2, and 2 pi over 2, and 2 pi, all those guys. So we would like to plug into this, this whole big orange blob. We would like to plug in things like 0, pi over 2, uh, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Oh, I used the sine. It's a cosine. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Really cosine of big orange blob, or of x minus pi over 2. Okay. What's the cosine of 0? If 0 winds up being plugged into this parentheses, what will we get? Cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. The cosine of, if this big orange blob winds up being pi over 2, if this whole thing comes out pi over 2, what's the cosine of pi over 2? Yeah. What? 0? What's cosine of pi? One of three pi over two mm. and two pi one. one. Okay. The thing is, though, this big orange blob, the thing that's inside the parentheses, is the result of taking pi over two away from x. But we don't we don't graph x minus pi over two. We graph x, right? We go to the x and then we go to the y. So if we want this to come out to be 0, what does to come out to be 0, and what does x have to be? So you have to plug in this x so that you subtract pi over 2 and get 0. So what does x have to be? To be pi over 2. Pi over 2 minus pi over 2 gives you this 0, right? We like 0, because the cosine of 0 is 1. We'd like to come out with pi over 2. We'd like this to be pi over 2. When we subtract pi over 2, we'd like the, the answer to be pi over 2. So what does x have to start as? Pi. Pi. Pi, we get common denominators. Pi over 2 minus, or 2 pi over 2 minus pi over 2. Pi over 2. How about, in order to get pi, what does it have to start as? 3 pi, Three pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 minus 1 pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2, or simplifies to pi. Right, what does x have to start as to get 3 pi over 2? 2 pi. And what does uh, x have to start as in order to get 2 pi after you subtract pi over 2? 5 pi over 2. 5 pi over 2, that's what you plug in for x. 5 pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is 2 pi. It's 4 pi over 2, which implies 2 pi. And that is the thing that we're taking the cosine of. We're taking the cosine of what we get after we subtract pi over 2 from x. So these are the actual x values that we're going to plug in to get these y values we're used to getting. Right? Notice the thing about the x values? They're pi over 2 bigger than what we would normally plug into the parentheses. Right? So they have to be pi over 2 bigger than pi over 2. They have to be this much bigger than this number to kind of offset it. So where you would think it would move to the left, you're actually going to move to the right so that you can compensate for that minus pi over 2. And if it's plus pi over 2, you've got to move to the left to compensate for that plus pi over 2. Yeah. So pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, and 5 pi over 2. So pi over 2 comma 0. Pi comma one, three pi over two comma zero, two pi comma negative one. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm graphing the sine wave when I should be graphing the cosine wave. Pi over two comma one, pi comma zero, three pi over two comma negative one, two pi comma zero, five pi over two comma one. Just like the cosine wave, only 
and shift it to the right pi over 2. Shift it to the right because we need bigger x values now so that when we subtract pi over 2, we get the normal x values. Sense. Are there any questions about that at all? If you don't have a question, it doesn't mean I think you're an expert, but if you have a question, it's a great time to ask one. All right. And um, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take this page, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to change one little thing and see what that changes about uh, our graph. We'll change it from pi over 2. Pi over 2 to, um, well, I guess I should change those other ones. I don't want this pi over 2 anymore. I don't want this to be pi over 2 anymore. in the parentheses, we still like it to be 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, because we know those cosine values pretty readily. is pi over 4. That means that all of these x values, what do they need to be so that when we subtract pi over 4, we get these ones? Like, what will I do to this value to figure out what this value would have to be? Add the pi over 4. So that when I subtract pi over 4, it goes back to 0, it goes back to pi over 2, goes, and so on. Okay? So, like, if I think I'm going to add pi over 4. Well, 0 plus pi over 4 equals pi over 4. Okay, I'm going to add pi over 4 to pi over 2. What's pi over 2 plus pi over 4? 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4. I'm going to add pi over 4. And what's pi plus pi over 4? 5 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4. Add pi over 4. 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 4. Uh, I didn't even bother to check. Uh, 6, 7 pi over 4. And 2 pi. Add pi over 4. We start with all those normal x values, right? Whichever ones mark off one full period of our of our graph. Then we'll just, you know, if we're subtracting pi over four, we'll add pi over four to figure out what these x values would be. If it was plus pi over four, we subtract pi over four to figure out what these x values would be. So that when we add pi over four, we get all of these back. So pi over 4, we're going to have to mark these out with pi over 4. Pi over 4, comma, 1. Because we start with pi over 4, then we subtract pi over 4, from that we get 0. We take the cosine of 0. We take the cosine of 0, and we get 1. And then 3 pi over 4, that's right here. That's going to take us to the midline. And then 5 pi over 4, that's going to take us down to negative 1. 
seven pi over four takes us up to the midline again. And nine pi over four is going to take us up to the max point. Right. And uh, I should have chosen a different color. Shift it one way or the other, so we're just going to, if we're going to shift it to the right, pi over 4, then we'll just take all of these values, these normal values, and add pi over 4. plus um, pi over 3. So this is going to be plus pi over 3 plus pi over 3. So you guys figure out what does it make these x values when we see that shift to the right. Plus pi over 3 should result in one left on the graph. Shift to the left, pi over 3. So if these points when they shift to the left, pi over 3, then how are we going to figure out what these x values are? Subtract pi over 3. Negative pi over 3. What's pi over 2 minus pi over 3? And that comes. Pi over 2 minus pi over 3 is pi over 6, yeah. Pi minus pi over 3? 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3. 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 3? 7 pi over 6. Pi over 6, you're doing amazingly well. And then 2 pi minus pi over 3. Let's just take a quick example of like uh, 3 pi over 2 minus 7 pi over, or minus pi over 3. So 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 3. We're going to need a common denominator of 6. Okay, so we're going to multiply this by 3. We'll multiply this by 3. 9 pi over 6 minus is going to be multiplied by 2. Minus 2 pi over 6. 9 minus 2 is 7. See, our smallest um, fraction of a pi is 6. So she marks this off at pi over 6's, and sometimes it'll simplify to pi over 3's, and it'll make it easier to, to count this off. Okay? So negative pi over 3, that's negative 2 pi over 6. Okay, we can make big ones and small ones for pi over 6. We have pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8. 9, 10, pi over 6. That'll give us everything we need. So negative pi over 3, that's here. Negative pi over 3, comma 1. Uh, pi over 6, that's right here. Pi over 6, comma 0. Um, 2 pi over 3, comma negative 1. That's 2 pi over 3, comma negative 1. I should mark these up. Seven. 
seven pi over six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pi over six comma zero, and five pi over three, that's right here, comma one. when you get a horizontal shift and a period change at the same time. Because if you're shifting left and right and it's kind of shrinking down or, or expanding out, then uh, well, all it means is there's like a, a, a process, that's maybe a couple of steps we should follow in the right order to make it easier on ourselves. Let me show you with the, uh, this tool here. So here's the, the sine of x. Um, I, uh, so I'm going to change the period and horizontal shift at the same time. So what my, my suggestion would be, let me put h back where it should be, okay, so that it, it starts out normal. Um, first, we'll do the period change, and then we'll do the shift, okay? Because here's what happens. We do the period change first, okay, it does the shrinky whatever thing, okay? Now that that's changed, the horizontal shift will move all of those new points wherever they are, like this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and then over that much, okay? We'll move it, you know, it's just moving left and right however much H is, okay? Let's look if we do it in the other order. Now if we shift it to the right say first, okay? We move them over that, that much, uh, and then we change the period. Like those points that we moved over, now they're like shrinking down, and then we have to figure out like what's the shrink factor. That's that's tougher to do than if we shrunk it all down. That was that's easy to do, right? Find a period two pi over b, and then do it shift it over. Okay. We'll do it in that order. Just throw it in there that has both of those things. Y equals the sine of two times x plus pi over four, let's say three pi over four. All right, so remember the first thing I said was find the period. Okay, what's the period of this function? Two, no, it's two pi over b, and b is one, two. No, b is the number that is not added, but multiplied, two pi. So it's two pi over two pi, which is just pi. The period's pi. Okay. So we'll start with those x values, with that new period, and we'll shift those over. So this period of pi, let's just mark that off. That's uh, it's the sine wave, so it's going to start down here, uh, and then by the time it gets to pi, that is going to be the full period, which means add a constant in there, add pi, and then that pi over two will be at a maximum. That two pi over two will be at a negative one. This is pre-shifting. We have not shifted anywhere. All we did is change the period. Now that we change the period, now we'll do the shift. We'll shift it. What camera do I? Nothing. It's making weird noises again. Me? No, him. I am. You are. Yes. Making weird noises. Question. Sounds like Dakota. Yes? <laughs> um, yeah, the very last, like, for the whole period, 
experience tied. Uh, yeah, I got used to uh, what's the one in the middle? The normal ones. None of them tied is what it is. Pyro two, thank you for pointing that out. Pyro two, pyro four, three pyro four. Shifting it to the left, pi over 3. What did we do? We subtracted pi over 3 from the, the standard values of pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. But in this case, the period has changed. So the, the numbers are pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and pi. Now we're going to shift to the left, 3 pi over 4. So we're going to take each one of these, 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi and subtract 3 pi over 4, shifting to the left 3 pi over 4. Most helpful thing to do is put your head down in despair. Probably will make it a lot easier. I'm going to color code these points. Moving to the left. That's just 0 minus 3 pi over 4. What's 0 minus 3 pi over 4? I'm going to wait for you. Negative 3 pi over 4. Then pi over 4. Minus 3 pi over 4 is what? common denominator, so that's 2 pi over 4 minus 3 pi over 4. That's negative pi over 4. Black one here, 3 pi over 4 minus 3 pi over 4. 0. And pi minus 3 pi over 4. That's 4 pi over 4 minus 3 pi over 4. So here's negative pi over 4, negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 4. pre-shift. This is before we shifted it to the left, pi over 4, and this would be after. Okay. And after that, we could keep going from here or down to here. We could just keep drawing it. did all this, we had the period change, we had the horizontal shift, and we also had minus three. 
just move it down three. You take this guy that has been period changed and shifted left, and just move it down three. down three, so here's one, two, and three. Midline is down here at three. But everything else is the same, so this is still on the midline. This is still at its maximum. The amplitude is one. This is down at the minimum. Uh, this one is still on So when you subtract three, you just move down three. If we change the amplitude, then we could do all this, and then the amplitude would be bigger. Okay. So the hardest thing you could possibly do, I would say, not shifting up and down, that's easy, move the midline. It's not changing the amplitude, that's easy. From the midline, go up the amplitude and, and go down below the midline, the amount of the amplitude. It's the getting the, the horizontal shift and the period change in the same thing. Okay? But remember to first change the period, find those new those places there, here, 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 and here, okay? for that, that guy before you shift it, and then shift it to the left by subtracting 3 pi over 4 from these guys, yeah, 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3, pi over 4, pi, or whatever they are depending on what the period changed to. The hardest thing about that is going to just be finding common denominators, finding what the, the new values are. But as I was explaining before, um, there's a video with each of these problems only with numbers have been changed to protect the innocent. Is that a joke that you guys didn't get? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the names of the change protect the innocent of your own All right. I guess it's not fair. I'm not sure I was even before my time. I just watched the reruns. I had dragon in the table.